What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today in the shop here at the Durbin Compound, I think what we're gonna do is build some cheap saw horses that don't suck. So I originally got this idea from Kyle over at RR Buildings. Um, he did an awesome project with his son. They built some sweet saw horses. I think I'm gonna put my own little spin on it. Uh, I think I wanna cut a couple little angles on the legs and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it. Uh, this cost all of, I think, under 20 bucks. So if you've ever gotten the little plastic or metal uh, brackets for saw horses and zapped them together with uh, drywall screws, you found out that there's a lot to be desired and they're just not sturdy. They don't hold up well. Yes, they might stack. Yes, they might tear down easy, uh, but they just all around don't do a good job. So how about you just buy the wood, put some time in, and uh, make some cheap saw horses that don't suck. So today what we're doing is six pieces that are uh, four foot long. We're gonna build a little I-beam. I thought that was an awesome, awesome job, Kyle. Uh, that's a great idea. And it has a great way of pocketing those legs into it as well. So uh, the legs, we're gonna make eight of them at 32 inches. First things first is we need to cut our lumber. All right, now that we got all of those boards cut, um, I went ahead and went with some different dimensions. I thought 48 inches was a little too long, uh, so I took it down to 42. So I took six inches off the top for the crossbar there. That'll give me plenty of uh, working room if I'm working with two by 12s, or I want my miter saw up on it. I'll have plenty of room uh, to be able to do a lot of stuff over a saw horse this wide. Um, I really like that aspect of it. As far as the legs, I went with the 36 inch leg to kind of bring it up high. Uh, so uh, when I'm working on my miter saw, I don't have to bend down um, and I'm not overreaching or, or overextending uh, while working with my miter saw. So next thing to do is to uh, drill some holes and run some screws and uh, put this project together. So we need that drill and impact. All right, now you have your drill and impact. Uh, what you want to do is pre-drill all of your holes. Um, I usually use an eighth inch bit to pre-drill for all drywall screws. So uh, we're going to go ahead and make our I-beams. I'm going to bring you in close, uh, some close and personal, and we're going to make the I-beam cross members, and then we're going to attach the legs. So um, I had burnt up my table saw while uh, trying to cut the legs, um, so it kind of gave out on me. So we might not do a miter cut. Uh, might do them exactly how Kyle built them. So let's get down to it. All right, first things first, we're gonna drill four holes here. I'm gonna keep my hole spaced out towards the end. And then all I'm using is some three inch coarse drywall screws here. Flip over and do the same thing. All right, so I was going to bevel this, uh, the legs here at a 45 degree angle, but I think I'm gonna leave them alone. Um, I think I have to leave them alone because uh, my, my table saw took a crap on me. So uh, it needs new brushes, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put the legs in here um, we're going to screw them into place and uh, get it going. So <clears throat> let's put the legs on this bad boy. All right, now we're going to square up our legs here.
right guys, so there you have it. Some cheap saw horses that are pretty awesome. Uh, they'll withstand the test of time. Um, you might need to uh, trim a little bit off your legs if, you're, if you weren't all that precise in the cutting procedure. Uh, when you cut them to length and they weren't all the same, uh, there might be some, uh, some trimming on the legs that you might need to do, figure out what leg is longest um, or that's throwing you off. Uh, putting the square in the elbow of each leg is very important. Make sure you get that leg straight uh, as far as it goes with the saw horse so that uh, you know your, your leg is going down straight to the ground. Uh, very important step. Now I'm just going to take the uh, random orbital sander. I'm going to sand all my edges, smooth it down, make it real, uh, real nice and finished. Um, if I ever want to use this as a uh, platform for uh, a miter saw, I can always stagger these. Uh, one thing I did figure out with my shop floor is that if I have the table or the uh, saw horse like this, it's way out of balance. And I'm like, man, did I cut it that bad? Is it really that bad? And then I turn it this way, and it sits up. It sits great. <laughs> so it's like, okay, the saw horse is fine this way, but if I turn it this way. It rocks like crazy. So there's a high spot or a low spot. I don't know, but I did figure that out. Um, got a little bit flustered. Um, it's 85 here in the shop. I think I've sweat enough today for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if that's what you're into, whatever. Uh, tell me how bad I suck in the comments. Um, I always enjoy reading that stuff. So um, as always, a nice, cool video. Uh, some man stuff going on here around the shop and uh, you know if you guys like this kind of this kind of stuff put it in the comments interact with me I'd love to talk to you as always I hope to see you subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video when people think I probably don't uh, work in my shop because it's always so nice and clean um, yeah I, I do leave projects out sometimes just junk strewed everywhere uh, crap all over the benches and stuff. So yes, I do work in my shop. It is a 100% working shop. And uh, from time to time, I do leave stuff out. So uh, it's not always pristine and clean like I do in the videos. So uh, I'm about to shoot another video right now.